You need to ask yourself tonight why it's more interesting to dwell and complain and come up with excuses than actually be happy. I'll save you time. Your mom f- you up. <laughs> so, cool, right? Or your dad, or your older brother, or some circumstance. Here's my big thing. I'm looking around, and even for the geezers in here, you're all living for another 50 fucking years. Minimum. There's people in here, right? I mean, dude, I know, I know you're like, fuck, awesome, right? Because you, when you were kids, you're like 60, fuck it. Now, <laughs> now, right, now, but you know what's crazy? Now, it is nuts. Like, how many people here are under 30? All of you outside of like, devast- like by, at scale, almost all of you get to 100, 110, easy. That's fucking nuts. You're, you're freaking out, you turn 30, and you are fucking living for another 90 fucking years. <laughs> you're like, I don't have my shit together. I'm like, you haven't even fucking started, dick. <laughs> I'm about to make this video about 18, it's gonna be called 18, 22, 30. These are the three ages that everybody just gets fucked. For some reason at 18, 22, and 30, you think you have to have every fucking thing figured out. And these fucking 59 year old parents are like, you gotta get your shit together, and they still have no clue what the fuck they're doing. And meanwhile, somebody at 15 knows what they're doing, right? To me, this age thing, it's like sports. Like, is experience better? Because I don't know, I saw 18-year-old LeBron and Kobe dominate, right? This is a talent game. This is a self-awareness game. This is like, do you have your shit together up here game? Are you letting somebody else dictate your happiness? Who, how, what? And it's all interesting to me because it all makes sense and it's right, but then this came along. You know, one of the reasons I put a lot of pressure on the parenting thing is I have got really educated by old people hanging out in retirement homes and 70, 80, 90 year olds. Here's what happens. Kids do things to make their parents happy because they don't want confrontation and they want it to be good. They go be a lawyer or a doctor because they don't want to fight or have a bad relationship. The problem is then they have a 50 year bad relationship because resentment and regret take over. I don't want parents and kids to fight, or I'm not trying to get into people's business. I just know it's way better for you to fight for three or four years and then have a great relationship than get along fakely for nine and then not like each other for life. (laughs) By the way, this whole notion of like, you can do anything and all this stuff, let me just tell you, it's stupid hard. Reality is, most of you are just averagely talented. Right? Like, you're not gonna over-index on anything too crazy. Here's the good news. This is not about how much money you make or how talented you are. This is about being happy. Everybody here, regardless of how fucking talented they are in making money or art or what have you, has shit that they're super into. You love Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles? Your whole life could be about fucking Michelangelo. (laughs) It could. And here's what really fucks with me. In this internet age, you could have a podcast around Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. You could buy Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle memorabilia on Craigslist and Facebook and Etsy and then flip it on a different platform because you're so fucking knowledgeable because that's the pizza eating fucking Leonardo. <laughs> that I'm just fascinated about what you, happens when you go all in on your passion, you're committed to it and you use the infrastructure of this. You living your life for 80 years as the fucking Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle expert, and this is getting funnier to me by the second, <laughs> making 83K a year in ads on your podcast, The Flip, some miraculous reason somebody paid you $2,000 to go to a Bush League Comic Con thing. <laughs> that person making 62,000 a year, being the fucking TMT fucking expert, versus them making 77,000 a year, being an admin in a company where they hate their life nine to five, that delta, is something I will go to the grave on because it is what I want to articulate to everybody, the, the unbelievable level of practicality to do shit around stuff you love. My friends, you wanna talk about something that has completely become something nobody talks about? Nobody talks about saving money. Like, 
It's just not a conversation. Like, there's a very easy way to do this. If you make 49,000 a year, live as if you're making 27. Everybody lives over what they make. No wonder you can't save money. Your apartment's too nice. Of course you can't save money. Your car is too fancy. Of course you can't save. You're buying clothes you can't afford. There are motherfuckers that complain to me. And this is where I'm, listen, if you're DMing me or emailing me, know that I don't fucking fool around. When you DM me and say, meh, I can't, I can't, the first thing I do is go to your account. Don't let me hear that you're broke as fuck and the first fucking story I click on, you're drinking a $7 fucking coffee. If you're broke, you're not allowed to take Uber. Take the bus, dick. We need to start saving money to get at, are you in a shit spot? Are you in debt? You don't like it? There's gonna be no fast track to a million dollars that's gonna fix that. It's gonna be taking a step back and drinking a whole lot of humility, not a fucking French latte. I don't get it. People are always like, Gary, your story about you building your dad's business, that's not true. Like, you fucking, like, that can't be true. You had money to invest in Twitter and all that shit. I know your story, I'm like, okay. Right, because when I made $53,000 a year, I had a $2,000 a month apartment, then I moved down to a $1,400 one because I wanted to save more money, and I bought nothing for a decade. I went out zero times, I bought no clothes, I wore liquor t-shirts to fucking work. (laughs) I fucking spent no money. Not super complicated. How many people here are immigrants or the children of immigrants? Raise your hands, raise them high. How many people are the children of, keep your hands up. And how many are the actual immigrants? Awesome. Immigrants have this shit figured out. Immigrants come here, they work, and they fucking save money. I went on one and a half fucking vacations my entire childhood. We went to, actually, we went to Orlando. (laughs) We stayed in the fucking Holiday Inn, and my mom ate like one sandwich in the week. Immigrant shit. Immigrant shit. Everybody cries about immigrants. They don't spend money on dumb shit, motherfucker. Try it. Try it. Save money and then do your thing. It's about patience. Where everybody gets caught up, now they're sitting. Somebody's sitting here. Sally's sitting here. She's 39. She's like, okay, this makes fucking sense. And then she's like, but fuck. And and she's like, it's going to take too long. And I'm like, Sally, you're 39. Do you want to be miserable as shit for the next 60 years? Or do you want to have some grinding years for the next seven and be 46 and young as shit and start the process of actually being happy? People's complete inability to take one step backwards, to take two steps forward, is destroying people. Do you know how many people here own their home? Do you know how many of those people should sell it? I'm being serious. Do you know how many people have no liquid cash Their home is their drain, and what they should do is sell the home and either buy a smaller one or rent to give themselves liquid to be able to go on the offense, but their home, which oh by the way, has four too many rooms. No, like, do you know few people have a home that actually fits their actual reality? People have homes with four extra rooms or live in a town that makes it look better for them. Man, there's so many fucking fucked up moves out here, my friends. I haven't even started. You all do know what I'm talking about is exactly like starting to ride a bike, kissing a boy or girl, or starting to swim. All of those things were scary as fuck. Do you know how many people here stood on the edge of a pool for like 19 hours in their life? And then you do it and you're like, what the fuck was I doing? (laughs) That's what's crazy about those things. Those are big, right? Like kissing somebody like when you're a kid, like that's big. This is your life and it's the same game. It's that normal in the internet age 
to jump around stuff you like. The best part is you can do both. You can work your nine to five, still pay your bills. You're like, cool, Gary, this is all very ideological, but I have rent, I have some loans, I got this shit, cool, keep it. What's crazy about the internet, unlike what we grew up with, whereas if you wanted to open up your store, your dream store, you know, you had to be there. And so by the time you got home at seven, you couldn't do that. The fact that you can do this from 7 p.m. to two in the morning until it means something enough to give you the courage to jump off the other thing, this is just practical. The dream of being happy and living your life has actually become practical. You're sitting on the information, but because it wasn't like that for the last 300 years, you can't wrap your head around it. And because it seems so crazy, the idea of doing it and nothing happens for six months makes you feel like it wasn't meant to be and you get out. Because you were built and groomed within a school environment. The end. The only reason I'm successful is because I got D's and F's and I didn't listen. I mean it. It's how I see things differently. You need somebody else to have already done it. You need to see the path. I don't like paths. I need blank slates. This is a blank slate. What do you like? Like, what do you like? Because the only way you're gonna work the 16, 17 hours on a weekend that will actually get you there in two years is if you love retro clothes, if you love strawberry fucking jam, (laughs) if you love rare Rod Carew artifacts. (laughs) That's the only way. (laughs) That was a good one. (laughs) That's the only way, right? That's the only way. And so I. I'm super excited about the time that we're living in. I love what's going on. I love that the big companies are losing. I love that the establishment is in trouble. I love it because I think it's gonna be better. I think we're all gonna be happier. I really do.